quite often I get the question, what's a great Nano fish to start with? What's a good beginner Nano fish? I'd like to talk about one of my favorites, the Ember Tetra, right now. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and right next to me here we have the Marine Land 12 gallon Eclipse Aquarium. You can't even buy these tanks anymore, but it's become one of my favorites. I've modified the light so it would shoot kind of high intensity LEDs and really grow plants very well. Now, I wanted to add a really colorful schooling fish to this tank, but I couldn't, I couldn't do too much of a fish. I mean, it's still only a 12 gallon tank, it's pretty small. The fish I picked was the Ember Tetra. Here's its scientific name for those of you that like to speak in Latin. They're from South America in the state of Mato Grosso. They prefer a heavily planted tank with rocks, driftwood, plants, the works. They really like a darker, darker substrate. It sort of helps their colors come out, makes them feel more secure. You want to have sort of a gentle water flow with these guys. Now, they appreciate a good amount of flow, but you know, not like river kind of flow, just just your normal tank setup. Ember Tetras make good tank mates. They get along with a lot of other kinds of fish. The Ember Tetras are great community fish, but they are very small. At adult size, usually is under an inch. It's like 0.8 or something like that. So you don't want anything, of course, in there that can eat them. Anything with a mouth big enough to fit these guys in it, you want to leave alone. They also won't compete for food very well. Uh, you really need a big group of them so they feel really comfortable enough to come out and go get what they want. But uh, any real boisterous and larger aggressive fish probably wouldn't work out well. Things like live bears, platys, and some Coriodorus, especially the dwarf Coriodorus, would be ideal. If you caught this tank on the update I did in April, I mentioned that I was having some issues with them and I wanted to talk to a friend. Well, I got some recommendations in the comments too about the heater, maybe turning up the heat a little bit, which I did. I took it from about 75 to about 78, 79, something like that. And that seemed to help a little bit. Uh, the other recommendation that was made to me was to add more fish. Because these guys take cues from fish that they see on the top and the bottom uh, to know whether or not it's safe to come out. It's kind of like they're using these other guys just to, hey, what's up, you see anything? So they'll look up the top of the tank and see some fish swimming around or the bottom of the tank, see some fish swimming around and figure they don't seem to be scared, so why should I be? The combination of those two things has really brought these guys out. They were kind of hovering around in the corner. Now they sort of glide back and forth throughout the tank and it's really neat to sit and watch them. I can see them from way over here on the couch and it's, uh, it's pretty fun to sit and watch them swim around. These guys are schooling fish. Now schooling fish only feel comfortable when they're in large groups of similar fish. So uh, typically they would say with schooling fish to have about six. I find that with smaller ones like this, especially, you wanna have a little bit larger number than that. So I would say maybe shoot for 10, 10 to 15 of these fish in a tank like this is probably great. Uh, I have 18 in here right now, and it seems to be working out great. Now as far as telling male from female, they look pretty much identical. Mainly you can tell the females from the males just because they're a little bit rounder, have a little bit rounder belly, they're a little bit more full bodied than the males are. Absolutely the best part about these fish is they will accept flake food, which means that you can always have some readily available. And Lord knows with my aquarium box and all the foods that I have already, I've got a wide variety of flake food coming in. Uh, they'll also eat tiny, tiny pellets if you wanna throw little pellets in there. The real huge benefit and what makes them sort of a beginner fish in my opinion is the fact that they will eat food that you can most likely readily have available. Now I also feed them uh, frozen food like blood worms, uh, baby brine shrimp, things like that. But majority of the time they eat flake food or a variety of different types of flake food. As far as pH goes, they can accept sort of a wide variety. I've seen reports of like 5.5 all the way up to 7.2, something like that. Try to stay as close to in the middle, of course seven. If you've got perfect seven water, then you're a lucky person because you can probably raise just about anything in that. But real consistent water is really important with these guys as any, you know, most any fish. They really do seem to appreciate softer water though. 
I haven't tried to breathe them yet, but a lot of people on the internet seem to think that softer water is definitely a key factor in trying to breathe them. So if you had that in mind, you might want to soften your water somehow. And if you're trying to raise them, you should know that they're egg scatters. They don't have any kind of parental instinct or anything like that. Uh, if you want to breed them, a lot of people will say that you could take a, a mesh and put it across the bottom, let the eggs fall through the mesh, and then you sort of pull the parents out and raise the, raise the eggs as they hatch. Now, like I mentioned before, they do do better with tank mates. And the tank mates I chose were Endler's Live Bears. And I grow these in my pond during the summer and then I pull them out and I pull, put them in other tanks as it starts to get cold outside. So I just went over to the pond and very selectively chose a few by plunging the net in as quickly as I could and just pulled out whatever came out. I got lucky though and I picked a couple, of, I have a couple that have turned out pretty beautiful in there. So that's pretty neat. And they're good tank mates, they're good. They, they have about the same temperament for food. They're not so big that they really bother the Ember Tetras at all. And the Ember Tetras have something to go, oh, it's safe. Ember Tetras are a real joy to keep. Uh, like I said, increasing my temperature a little bit, adding the extra fish. I'm not sure which pay, played a bigger role in like really bringing them out, but all of those things help. I also, uh, when I initially got these, I think I only had 10. There were only 10 available at the store. And I went back and I got a bunch more. So uh, large numbers, a little bit warmer than usual, in my tanks anyway. And having friends in there with them really, really made for a nice combo with this fish. And that's what I recommend. Uh, you can keep them in 10 gallons. Uh, this is just a little bit, you know, two gallons more than a 10 gallon tank. Uh, so they're great. They're great for little tanks like that. And apparently if you want to breed them, they're not too hard to breed either. And folks, that's all I have for you today. Next week, I'm gonna do something kind of different. It's called a trim Q&A. So I'm gonna take questions that you guys give me and I'm gonna answer them all. You can ask me anything you like. I will answer them all as I trim the 55 gallon. And I've got a little contest where maybe you can win the plants that I trim. So if you'd like some trimmings for my 55 gallon upstairs, the big 55 everyone's asking about, or if you have a question that you wanna ask me about that or anything else, leave it down below. I'm gonna answer questions next week on the trim Q&A with the 55. And if it goes really well, if people really like it, I'm gonna, I'll explain more about the giveaway there. But if it goes really well and people like it, then I might do a trim Q&A for the cube also. So maybe win some free plants and ask me some questions. You guys can watch the whole thing while I answer them. Trim Q&A. Anyway, folks, we'll see you next week. Follow your bliss. Try out an Ember Tetra. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Greenland Eclipse Aquarium. Here's a scientific name for those of you that like to speak Latin. Show offs. Yeah. Alrugina. In the state of Mato Grosso. Mato Grosso. But you don't want anybody that's too aggressive for. Uh... Ember Tetras make pretty good tank mates. They get along with all sort of. They seem to really have a good time together. <laughs> and uh, one that I'm just gonna start a nano planet tank, maybe, and I wanna... The Ember Tetra, to take care of, do one that has, that will eat the food that you, <laughs> really available. I can't stress how important that is. I can too, I just did. <laughs>